Okay, I'm recording. All right. Okay, so here I have my mom who is substituting as Natalie, who is a dear friend of mine, and we've been working together um, throughout these three months that I've been in this class. Uh, she has strep throat right now, so I have my mom who's subbing as her. Um, and I just wanna go over some information on Natalie. She, I would say, is a heavier set girl who would be a pickier eater. Um, she's always been a little bit bigger, fluctuated 10 to 20 pounds. Um, when she's really diligent about working out, she can lose a lot of weight, but she struggles a little bit with binge eating and... Poor choices. Poor choices, binge eating, and eating late at night with alcohol, she'll eat more. Um, inconsistent dieting patterns and she already has the genetic predisposition to be a bit overweight um, so she did a three-day food log for me and I do think that for anybody who's doing a food log is more aware of their choices and does tend to um, not count all their sodium intake or they just make better choices because they know that they're gonna have the three-day food log um, so I don't know how accurate it is, but I think for the most part, she does eat like this, give or take some, some extra sugary or fatty foods on the weekends. Um, she doesn't have any pre-existing conditions. She takes migraine medication, um, and then she does take Adderall every day, which was why on one of our weekly projects, she suffered from high blood pressure, and I couldn't really pin it down to it being an issue with weight or it being Adderall. Um, she doesn't have, after looking at her blood work, she didn't have any high A1C. She just had high cholesterol, HDL cholesterol. Um, that was really the only thing on her blood work and her kidneys were not functioning at their full capacity. Uh, so she had to do a kidney ultrasound, but her doctors did indicate that it could be something to do with a high protein diet or um, maybe too much protein. So she's been doing an amazing job, by the way. Natalie has always tried on her weight and she always goes to workout classes and I really support her um, through her journey. However, one attainable weight loss goal um, for her, I, I think would be to weigh around 140 pounds, 130 pounds, not too skinny. And increasing her fiber would be something that I think would be easily attainable um, and really important a really important choice for her um, and something she could do that wouldn't be cutting out large groups of food because she doesn't really eat a variety of um, meat. She doesn't eat any fish. She doesn't eat any steak. She really is limited to chicken and turkey. So she eats these multiple times a day, um, seven days a week, which is a lot of protein. So after looking at her food log, which I have here on the computer, she's eating eggs almost every single day. Um, high cholesterol. High cholesterol, yes, but also incorporating fiber could lower her cholesterol. Um, so she's eating eggs every day for breakfast. There's no smoothies. There's no whole grains. Um, even if she were to eat a fortified whole grain like Raisin Bran, it could actually help with her cholesterol as opposed to eating eggs every single day, um, even though they are hard boiled. Uh, and then she also is going to places needing processed carbohydrates, so Panera Bread, um, a turkey sandwich, even though that's not a horrible food option for her goals um, and for, and just in general, for general wellness, she needs to be incorporating more fiber rich foods. Um, and then for dinner, she's eating things like romaine, um, no kale, no dark leafy greens, uh, no blueberries. I don't see really any polyphenols in this diet. She does have a half of an avocado. Um, throughout these three days, I'm also seeing again with the eggs and the chicken. This is really a pattern that she's eating a lot of starchy foods and a lot of protein. Um, however, there are no antioxidants or fiber in here. So my recommendation to Natalie, that would be like a really, I would say easy thing to do and to incorporate would be cutting out the eggs so frequently and or eating a few hard boiled eggs throughout the day, but adding in a ton of fiber rich foods because they also um, can lower your cholesterol, butyrate in the gut, it's prebiotic fibers. And overall mortality is lower when you're eating a higher fiber diet. I think all Americans need more fiber. She could also add in something like psyllium husk to her diet, but eating a fiber 
rich breakfast in the morning and starting your day can also help with insulin resistance. Even though she doesn't have elevated A1C, um, it could help lower just like her insulin threshold. Um, she's young too. Yeah, she's young. Smoothies would be a really great thing. Um, oatmeal would be a really great thing. Nuts, grains, legumes. Um, so culturally, her limitation would be that she is a pick eater and, and doesn't eat. It's never been exposed. Never been exposed and also not open to trying. Um, so she really does stick with the same foods every single day and that really limits you. So if she could just add in one or two things that she likes that are filled with fiber, she wouldn't be as hungry throughout the day because when you're adding fiber in, it expands in your gut and it feeds your good bacteria and it, and it creates a situation where you're not having those blood sugar drops so consistently. Um, which I think she will also do too when she's not eating how she did in her log, she will not eat for a long period of time, get really hungry, not be prepared and go to Starbucks and get a croissant or go somewhere mm. and get a carbohydrate, um, a high carbohydrate food. With, I mean, which carbohydrates are important, like she's having, but she's not working out or doing heavy anaerobic exercise every single day, making it okay for her to have that amount of carbohydrates. So. Um, my simple recommendation would be to add high fiber foods in. Um, things like reducing sodium, this goes for processed foods in general. If she was stopping to eat as many processed th foods throughout the day, she would inadvertently lower her sodium intake. Um, when you eat out at restaurants, the sodium's 10 times higher. Um, and this could have something to do with the cholesterol. But at this point, she doesn't have any metabolic syndrome. Um, she doesn't have high A1C, her fasting glucose is fine. She only has um, elevated cholesterol and she does has, have high blood pressure, but they, they associate that with Adderall. So, but for her age being 28, it's she's teetering on the side of um, metabolic syndrome, which mm -hmm. is dangerous in general. And she's a young, risk factor. genetics are in her favor right now. And another thing that she could do, she is drinking Starbucks every single day. You can add um, an inulin fiber to your coffee, um, like two scoops, and that's adding fiber to your coffee, and that can give you the extra fiber in your day. Because at this point, there's not much. I mean, romaine lettuce is a good amount of water, so I don't see any. I don't see any cucumbers. I don't see any anything that's adding a lot of fiber to her diet. Um, yeah, and that'd be my simple recommendation for her. Let's Perfect. see if I wrote anything else down. Is that attainable, Natalie? Ooh. Um, okay, all right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, let's see. That was way more than six minutes.